What's up, everybody? I am back with another exciting episode of Talk Dragon Ball, which is what we're going to call this little game here, this little uh, show. And uh, as before, I am joined by Super Jayan and uh, a guy whose name I came up with and then can't even figure out the damn spelling. <laughs> yeah, he misspelled my name in the first ever video I did with him. But that's okay, I forgive you. I mean, it's almost as bad as the damn Funimation folks for misspelling Frieza with an, and putting an I in there. Yep. Frieza. Yep. Who's Frieza? Fucks me, man. Fucks me. Uh, well, they did, <laughs> pretty sure they did that with a few other characters, too. Well, yeah. Like, for some reason, Mr. Satan was spelled H-E-R-C-U-L-E. I don't really understand how you spell Satan like that, but whatever. Whatever. I will yep. say this. I'm saying that very tongue in cheek. Um, when I was younger, I used to hate the Hercule name. Uh, now I kind of really understand it because you can't call a character Mr. Satan and put him on television. Uh, yeah. I really do get it. Get it now. Not to mention that uh, it was funny because uh, uh, it was funny because there's you know obviously in the Boo saga there's that classic scene where people are. Yelling, you know, and, and shouting, Satan, 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 yeah. you know, and that's uh, kind of funny. But uh, at the same time, uh, it kind of bit him in the ass when Toriyama revealed that he does have a first name. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. his name is not Hercule Satan. His name is Mark <laughs> Satan. But still, it's kind of funny how they bit him in the ass. I would have just called him Mr. Savage. I think he was called Mr. Savage in the uh, French dub. I could be wrong on that, though. Yeah, I know. yeah, I never got why they went with the whole um, like I, I never got why Toriyama went with the whole name name series like like that. He called Videl, obviously Videl, which is devil spelt backwards, as everyone knows. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the go was there, why he um, gave him those names, but yeah, Not backwards, it's always but jumbled up. Yeah. Well, yeah. another pun. I mean, I guess he was running out of puns. Yeah. I mean, my favorite from that saga is Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. That's that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So today uh, we're talking about. What do you want to see in a future Dragon Ball Z video game? Um, I, now, I think you've played more Dragon Ball games than me. I've I played have, my share. Yeah, I've played every single Dragon Ball game it's, except for going back to like the NES days. I haven't played a lot of the NES games. I think the only NES one I played, and I think it was an NES one, was Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension. No, that's Super was, NES. Super NES, yeah. So that was the that's the oldest Dragon Ball Z game i played and oh actually there was one older than that i played which was like a dragon ball z rpg game i can't remember it was like uh it was on the legend nes of the and super sign or whatever legend oh. of the super sign yeah it ended at the at the uh, nemec saga when you defeated frieza so you um, never played like gekishin furiza or any of those nes ones I, ever or no dragon I power i didn't play those no i, I, I before... tried but they, they're not very good yeah, they were a bit before my time um the difficulty on them was much much higher back then those games were fucking hard eh? like they really tested you. Um, yes, NES games were tough. But that being said, the, the the problem is that there's a good kind of challenging, and then there's like I'm not interested kind of challenging. And the problem with the Dragon Ball games, for me anyways, from the NES era, is that none of them had real good translations. So yeah. it, it's hard to play a game that's very text-based, because they were text-based uh, with the cards and whatnot if you can't read the text. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, like, I, I've played through all, all of the PlayStation-era games. There was only really – there was no good ones on the PlayStation. I disagree. Uh, I like Dragon Ball Z Legends. I love that game. You liked Legends? All right, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. Legends was awesome because you had to play through the game the right way. You had to play through the correct way or else you didn't get to unlock everything. And it was also the first game that gave you the ability to play with pretty much everybody from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I really did like it. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was kind of, you know, it got kind of repetitive after a while, but out of, out of the three on PS1, I liked that one. But it didn't really get big until the Budokai games on PS2. That's, That's when it, it kind of yeah. really blew up. Budokai 1 was like a taste. Budokai 2 was kind of a step sideways in a way, but it had better graphics, so we played it. I and love Budokai, Budokai 2. So Budokai 2, yeah, with the, it's kind of like kept playing a fucking a board game with the pieces that go boop, boop, move from oh, place to place. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Budokai 3 was by far the best, and I don't think anyone can really debate that. So, <laughs> so for years after the Budokai games, the market got like very flooded with Dragon Ball games. Um, yeah. Overly flooded, if you ask me. I remember there was a time period there in the mid-2000s when we were getting Dragon Ball Z games. We were getting three or four a year. I mean, uh, you know, 
there were DS games, there were console games, there were RPG games like Legacy of Goku that were also mm. um, on the Game Boy. We were getting a bunch of fighting games. I mean, it just got I, – I feel it got kind of ridiculous when there was like – yeah, Budokai one, two, and three. Budokai Tenkaichi one, two, and three. Which, by the way, the Japanese names of those games are Dragon Ball Z one, two, and three, and Dragon Ball Z Sparking Neo, Sparking, and Sparking Meteor. Um, That's right. Which I think yeah. are cooler names. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. And then it got kind of ridiculous because it, it it was definitely confusing. I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but when they called it Dragon Ball Budokai uh, Tenkaichi, and they just added the Tenkaichi, which is wrong. You're supposed to say Tenkaichi Budokai. Tenkaichi. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. And I said that exactly how you're supposed to say it, folks. Tenkaichi Budokai. That's how you pronounce That's how you fucking say it the right way. Anyways. The strongest under the heavens. The strongest under the heavens. That's right. But, but um, yeah, look, there were some good ones in the, the flooding of the market, though. Like, uh, oh, there were, I know, but it was. There, I, there I felt were. it was too many. Um, and I'll use the incorrect, or the, the U.S. name, or the international name, because it was called that over here as well. Uh, Budokai... Budokai Tenkaichi 3 was a very, very good game. That, that was, was the good... one that has a, every character, but that's also Almost the one that, every character, uh, that, yeah. ga- that game gets a lot of hate, though, from what I've noticed. Uh, a lot of people still refer to that as the best Dragon Ball Z game, and they refer to Xenoverse as... Like, they compare Xenoverse to that game. But not, not because of the similarities, but in terms of quality and how good of a game it is. That's I, why they compare I think Xenoverse is better, but that's just my opinion. I like Xenoverse more. I have a lot of good memories playing Budokai Tenkaichi 3, but I think Xenoverse is better because because they are, which at the top of our video, they're, they're taking the franchise in a new direction. They're doing new stuff with it, which is, you know, the, the mm. RPG system. How long have we wanted a decent RPG system? Now, this RPG system isn't perfect, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Now, um, you know, you mentioned that whole, you know, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. I think that, my opinion, I think that was really the peak of Dragon Ball games, um, because after that is when it really got ridiculous. Um, by yeah. that time, the popularity of Dragon Ball had kind of gone down, and then there were a bunch of games that came out in between that I literally had no interest in. Like, I love Super Dragon Ball Z. Um, I love that game. Uh, I love that game, and I love, uh, I mentioned it before, Revenge of King Piccolo on the Wii. I love the games that weren't just fighting games because the fighting – here's the problem with these Dragon Ball games. Here's the problem is that when you strip it all down, a lot of them are pretty much the same shit. You do Braddock's Taboo. You fight the same fucking fight. You have the same play mechanics where it's like strike, strike, uh, you know, fly, beam, and then you do a combination. Do It's like the same shit. Like that, That's one thing I could not stand about these games, that it was the same – fucking shit sorry for cursing and but there were a few that i thought were like really kind of a waste of time like dragon ball z sagas you know i wasn't into that one Um, dragon ball z infinite world infinite world that was the next one i was gonna say now raging blast was you know that was okay but um at the same time by the time raging blast came out in 2009 bro Dragon Ball was kind of yesterday's news. I mean, this is before, this is right when you know Evolution came out. You know, right when Kai started. Um, but there wasn't that much interest until Battle of Gods. But then we got like Ultimate Tenkaichi, which I don't even know. I, I almost feel like that game came out just to have a next gen game. You know, that and Raging Blast 2. and then Dragon Ball Z for Connect, which I have not played. You have it, and you told me it sucks. It does suck, yeah. It's uh, it's a rehash of Ultimate Tenkaichi, but with motion controls. That's legitimately what it is. It's the exact same game with motion controls, pretty much. Oh, that sounds horrible. Um, the Power Glove was bad enough back in the day, folks. So yeah. And the thing is, like, you know, they came out with uh, so we got like a year break because in 2012 they had the Kinect game and then the Budokai HD collection, which is just a remake. So I don't count those. So we did get a break there. And then you know, 2014 we got Battle of Z, which totally fucking flopped. <laughs> And that was because the the game mechanics were a it was categorized as a fighting game and it was not a fighting game. And then b uh, the network was horrible. Like the uh, the online lag was so bad it was unplayable. And the problem with those kind of games, those Gundam esque team battle games, is that you have to have you have to have a good connection. If not, it's not gonna work. Um, and then we of course we got Xenoverse. So here's my question to you, Jay. Um, yep. If, 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 if they came to you 
Yes. Namco Bandai, and they said, we're going to make a Dragon Ball Z video game. We want your ideas. What what would you do? What kind of Dragon Ball game would you like to play? What kind of Dragon Ball game would you like to, What kind of game do you want to see? What kind of... Okay, blah. What do you want to see in a future Dragon Ball video game? And when I say Dragon Ball, I'm talking about the entire Everything. franchise, not just Z. I mean, it's going to be labeled Z because Z is the most popular you know, one. But you know what I'm saying. Like, What What would you do? What would you do if they gave you the, the, the control? Um, there's, there's aspects of Xenoverse I really like. Uh, they can take it down the path of just making another Xenoverse, but making it better and more open, like open worlds, because Xenoverse is open in Toki Toki City, the hub world, and then it's open to a degree when you do the missions. It's free roam in the missions, and there's but there's still bodies, and, and uh, it's very linear. It does put restrictions around the map. But if they go with uh, playing through the sagas again, and they don't even have to twist the stories, but you play, let's say, in the... I'm, I'm going to take the RPG mechanic. RPG is the best way Dragon Ball Z games are. That's my opinion. Because you can have RPG no, and then you Are can, you talking about like JRPG style? like um... J, Yeah, JRPG style. But it, you can because you can still have fighting mechanics in the game. It can still be feel like a Dragon Ball Z game. And, and I, I, I'd say play... You can either play the game through the game as a your own custom character or you can play through the story the way it's meant to be played, like with as the same way the anime and the manga takes it, but you can kind of um, play it like, let's say, in the fucking, for example, just something like uh, you can train for the Saiyans, right? When the Saiyans are coming, you could be playing as Piccolo and you can train over level and then beat the Saiyans and then it gives you an alternate ending to the Saiyan saga. You know what I mean? Like something like that. Um, well, do, do you think the Radix taboo thing is played out because... I kind of feel it is. Like I think that just it, playing Radix Taboo is 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 extremely played out. They have to do some kind of twist on it, like with Xenoverse. But that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's that's what I mean, and uh, that's why I, I say like you can you like say for the Saiyan Saga as an example, you can play as Piccolo, Goku, Krillin, um, Tenshin Han, Yamcha, or no? Tenshin Yamcha, yep. And you can take them, train them, like go exploring around the world, collect items, meet meet new um, NPCs, level up. And then when the Saiyans come, if you've done enough work, you can beat the Saiyans as this character, and each character gets their own like alternate ending to the saga. And, and you can recruit people, like recruit. Say you don't kill Raditz, you recruit Raditz, and you can play as Raditz to try and beat Vegeta and Nappa. Interesting. So there's so much potential there. Like that, they, is, they, that is unique. They could still use the story, but change it up, like in that regard, where they there's still you can still have the exact Dragon Ball Z story, but then you can either play through the, the same fucking story that we know, which is nothing wrong with, but let's face it, it's been done like 20 times before, 15 yeah, times, because Xenoverse is the 15th game, yeah. Or you can do that, but you can also add what I've said and then make a whole new dimension around it. So that way, people who are new to the genre can play the game and learn the learn the story. If they're playing the game for the first time, they can learn the story and maybe they'll get into Dragon Ball Z through playing that game, but also add the aspects I've just said, and then you've got a whole new game as well on top of that. It keeps you coming back to play, like the Saiyan Saga I'm using because it's the first saga. You keep, you finish it as Piccolo, you're like, alright, now I know now I want to level up Yamcha and see what the ending is for Yamcha. Like, does Yamcha somehow become a badass? Never. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, never, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> he, he crosses the street and gets hit, hit by a bus, but you know, like... Just give every single character, kind of like how Tekken, you know, the Tekken games on the PlayStation. Yeah, every they all time, have like, their own endings you're talking about. Endings, yeah, except you make it for an RPG for each saga. And at the end, of, at the start of each saga, you can start from a level one as a new character again. So each saga in itself is kind of like a new story altogether, and you have to start from scratch at the start of each saga. If they could, like, get something like that, that'd be fucking cool in my opinion yeah because they will give you replay replay value with um yeah you know with different yep. characters now yeah. um you know as you know and and i'm sure most of our of our youtubers know this there is a new dragon ball z game coming out um very very soon which i am excited about called extreme butoden and this game is going to have like 300 characters it's going to be another fighting game and i, I have a feeling it's going to end up actually disappointing because I have a feeling it's going to be the same shit. Everybody's going to have the same move, same mechanics. And I don't, I don't like it when there's video games 
where everybody has the exact same moves and it's a fighting game. I do not like that. I never have because there's no customizable. There's no cus custom. I don't even know what the word is. You know, you can't customize it. Um, you know, you can't come up with a strategy. But the game is gonna have blue SSJ Goku in it, so I'm probably blue SSJ Vegeta and Gold Frieza. So, but it's supposed to have yeah. every character, including Dragon Ball and GT yeah. people. Um, but to me, like, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not. Now, it, I think, all right, if you're gonna do a fighting game, I really, really love Super Dragon Ball Z, cause it was done by Noritaka Funamizu, who did the Street Fighter series. Um, and I always, always wanted a Dragon Ball Z game that was like that, where it's Street Fighter mechanics, uh, Capcom fighting game mechanics with, with Dragon Ball Z characters, and there is a fan-made game out there called Hyper Dragon Ball Z, which looks like it has it right. That's a beautiful yeah. game. That, have you seen that the footage game, of that? I have, and that game, to me, if they could actually get like uh, some funding for that game, you guys should look this up, because if they can get some funding for that game, and if they could get that game live, like, licensed and put out there which is a lot very long shot because you know they've got to be able to actually get the licensing to use the characters and everything but man that that would be a hell of a game like they've nailed that fighting system like the combos you can pull off like 7500 combos in that game like it's amazing uh that's, that's how that's how a fighting game should be exactly yeah it should be yeah. the best fighting games of all time has have always been very smooth and have always been very unique. And, um, you know, I've always been kind of a Capcom guy growing up, um, but I've also, I have experimented with SNK games, and I do love a few of them, like Final Fight, not Final Fight, but uh, Fatal Fury. Final Fight's fucking Capcom. Yeah, Fatal, Fatal Fury. Fury. Yeah. Uh, Art of Fighting was fun for a while, but the problem with SNK games, like when you get to King of Fighters, is that some of the finishing moves are impossible to do. Um, yeah. I don't like that. They shouldn't be that hard. I kind of like how Capcom does, like, you know, uh, yeah. quarter circle, quarter circle, two punch, you know. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think a Dragon Ball Z game like that would be awesome. And what I would like to see, uh, I'm your thoughts on this one, is you do an arcade-style fighting game, right? And you have, you know, Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, you know, your typical characters, right? And depending on which character, you do like with what they did with Street Fighter Alpha, where depending on which character you choose will depend on who the final boss is. So if you pick Gohan, the final boss is Perfect Cell. If you pick Trunks, the final boss is like number 18 and number 17 at the same time or something wacky like that. You know, If you pick Vegeta, the final boss is Goku. If you pick Frieza, the final boss is SSJ Goku. Like I think that would kind of make it, you know, like Street Fighter Alpha. The first Street Fighter Alpha was like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that idea. That's um, yeah, th that's that's the thing though. They could go with something really elaborate and take like f three years to make a game like what I said, or they could just do something simple like what you've said that really doesn't take all that much to do. Like the the extreme Batoden game that they're bringing out soon. If they nail that and that get yeah, that 3DS game, if the fighting system is sound and I can't imagine it to be too complex because it is on a it is on a handheld device. No, it, can... well, it's gonna be like the old Batoden games from SNES, which I, you said yeah. you, you had not played those before. Not all of them. I've watched a lot of footage, so I know how they like. I haven't. I can't tell you how they play, but I I can, I can kind of see how they play. You they're, know what I mean? They're, they're beautiful looking games, but yeah, the, the um, gameplay is okay, bro. It's basically like a 2D version of like the Budokai games, but it's a little like uh, they're okay. How about that? But what were you gonna say? Yeah. Um. Yeah, but if they can if they can get the if they can get something like this to like if this if let's put it this way if Extreme Butoden is a success on the 3DS, I don't see why they can't spend a little bit of money in their time, like a year or six, six to eight months even, doing a version of that for the consoles and for Steam, where you can pay like 20 bucks and have an arcade game like that, with where you can hook it up, hook your console up to your TV and have a roster like that, and play the, like the good old days, like a Street Fighter esque type of Dragon Ball Z game on your TV. And you could That'd even be do really tag cool. Tag mode, like fucking Marvel yeah. versus Capcom type shit. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Exactly, and let me tell you one of the best things that gets overlooked about these old-school side-scrolling games like Street Fighter. You don't have to have split-screen to play two-player. It's always on one screen. That's the best thing about those old games, is it's always done on one screen. So you could have a you could have a, a massive TV and enjoy these epic fights, if like assuming they do the battle system correctly, on, a, on like a 50, 60-inch TV, and you wouldn't have to split the screen. You could share the screen and fight. That's awesome. So they could just do a simple route like that, you know what I mean, rather than 
Um, and you yeah. know what else would be a good idea too for those kind of games? Um, you do like the Capcom style fighting game, you know, like Street Fighter and shit. But you include yeah. some of some uh, aspects from like Killer Instinct and Mortal Kombat. Um, for example, uh, I like the idea of doing not fatalities because that's copyrighted or whatever, but doing like ultimate finishing moves where if you do it when the when the, your opponent's health bar is low. It does yeah. like a, a like something special. Like for example, I'll give you an example. Just I'm just coming up with this off the top of my head. Like Vegeta would, you know, his finisher would be he'd get up and do the final flash, and it would be this special kind of animation just for that move, and it's like from the show. Or uh, Goku would do the Genki Dama. Uh, Krillin would. I mean, they're not gonna do this, but Krillin would shoot the kins on and chop the guy in half. Yes, folks, I'm using yeah. Japanese names. That's what I grew up on. Deal with Pic it. Piccolo, Piccolo would use the Makanko Sapo. Oh, drill Makankosa. you through the chest. Yeah. Yep. So. Or uh, he'd use that yeah. move that he used on number 17, where he. Put 17. The, yeah. yeah. So, I can't think of the uh, Japanese translation for that one. I know the English or the US dub was light grenade, but uh, no, that was light grenade was what he used on Cell, Imperfect Cell. But anyways, we won't go off topic. Yeah, that move is like called the Giretsuko. Oh, I can't, I can never pronounce that new. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about, the one yeah. he used on, on first form Cell. So, yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, what I wanted to ask you about here, um, and this is really, this is really kind of the real topic of this show, because um, I want you to use your brain here, brainstorm as a hardcore fan. So there's a couple Dragon Ball games. Um, one of them that comes to mind is Shin Budokai Another Road, which is a game that's basically, uh, I think it's a PSP game, and you basically play... It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and what it is is you play Future Trunks' storyline if the Boo Saga happened. And Trunks goes back in time to get the characters from our timeline, or not our timeline, you know, there to the, the regular timeline, the you know, the other mm -hmm. one. And he brings them into the future. But the problem with that game is there's a lot of plot holes because that game incorporates the movies, therefore it makes no sense. But I like the idea. I like the idea of giving Trunks his own adventure, so to speak. Yeah. Now, and, you know, and then, of course, there's Xenoverse, another game where Trunks and time travel are a very prevalent, a very, um, you know, a, a core thing about the game. So they come to yep. you and they say, we don't want to do Radix Taboo. We want to do something else. What would you tell them? Let's do a different story mode here than Radix Taboo. They've really done it with Xenoverse um, in a way. They Okay, no, that's kind of the wrong answer because they, they have, well, have that's done Radix the Taboo with a twist, yeah. Which yeah, I like, by but, the way. But they they should uh, do a, Z, a second Xenoverse game because they are going in the right direction with Xenoverse. I firmly believe that, and I firmly believe a lot of the fan, fans do that. So they could keep going with Xenoverse, but extend the story past what they've done in the show, and like in the anime and the manga, Rematch and with include the yeah, include maybe if they don't include the Sit down with the, it's, it's hard, you know, like because anything they do in a video game, you've got to assume is always going to be non-canon. So of course, um, yeah, the game make up make up some story for what happens at the end of all these new movies. You know what I mean? Like make up something that happens with the twelve universes that I spoke about the other night for the for an, maybe what they could do for the next movie. You could use that in a video game, or they could uh, sit down with Toriyama and say what what could you see as an alternate timeline that we could do for a video game and come up with all these new characters that don't, we've never seen before that cuz we 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 might we might not never we may never get all these new characters we want in the next movie like maybe they can bring in all these new characters we don't know anything about and just do a clean original story that takes off where Xenoverse left off cuz um for spoilers coming up here, but I'm assuming everyone watching this has finished Xenoverse. Have you finished Xenoverse, man? I won't tell you the ending if you don't want to know it. Um, but, uh, tell me. Go ahead. But so you have Demi been warned, folks. Yeah, uh, Demigra obviously isn't dead. Demon God Demigra is not dead. So you you bring him back, and you take it off from there, and you just do an original story where rather than well, okay, um, I'm saying, do you if you're in charge, do you incorporate the time travel again? Uh, do you go back to the Dragon Ball era? I would assume not, but I mean, what, no. what, 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 what else would you do? You know, like, uh, like I understand what you're saying, but I mean, what's the the game gonna be? Is it gonna be just a new story from then on, like, like just for the game, or is it gonna incorporate the familiar Dragon Ball Z storyline, um, Radix Taboo, or even aspects nah. of that? You know, complete, completely original. Nothing, 
nothing from the, the, well, the continuation shows. is what you're saying continuation yeah and obviously like i said it can't be canon because it's not part of the uh, the manga but or the or the anime but yeah just do a complete new story including the characters that have already created toa mira and um Demigra, because as far as I know, Tor and Mira aren't. This isn't the first game they've been in. They were in the Dragon Ball Z Online MMO that was That's in Korea, right. that was in um, overseas, yeah, in the in the uh, which had Asian a lot of market. potential and they never had a lot of yeah. yeah. They never released it over here, but yeah. So they sh- they could involve those three characters and then kind of elaborate on that and where they came from, sort of thing, a bit more, and then make a whole new story from that. And I always like to believe, even though it's probably not true, because as I said, nothing in the game's canon. Uh, I would like to believe that uh, Demigra is another one of the gods that uh, Beerus was talking about, because he is—he is a he demon acts god, like you know? right? <laughs> yeah, he, and he has—he's called Demon God Demigra. Like he could be the demon, he could be the god of Deborah's realm. You know what I mean? So, um, and that could be—you could go to the demon realm, which is like a, a complete opposite world of out. Because I'm pretty sure Supreme Kai describes it as Deborah's world as an the the complete upside down world of their world. So the and same we've never same seen sort it of before. Yeah. Go there and take the characters there. Take the cast of Dragon Ball Z there, um, and take your new unless, carry your unless custom. you count the Dragon Ball filler because there was an episode filler, where yeah. Goku went to the Demon World, but I don't think that was the same idea of Darbara. Yeah, and um, you know, take the whole cast there. Take your custom character there from Xenoverse, so you can carry your custom character from Xenoverse over. Um, make more playable races. Make Make more. Uh, they got to elaborate on the RPG element here. I can't stress that enough because the RPG element is what draws people into Xenoverse. Having a custom character, being able to um, customize him, customization and the RPG element. People get addicted to leveling up characters and putting skill points into things. Oh, We've yeah. seen it in all the popular games that have come out in the last ten years. I'll, I won't go back to the old ones, but we, like you just look at games in the last uh, six, even six to seven years that have come out that have big skill point systems that people love. Uh, Borderlands games, uh, the Fallout games, you know what I mean? Absolutely. People love that. All of people, them. people get addicted to those sorts of games where you can progress your character. So it, it, they gotta, they got to bring that back with the next Xenoverse game. I'm, I'm going to assume that's where they get, they're taking the, the franchise, uh, as another Xenoverse game. But yeah, the, I, I reckon that would be kick-ass to just elaborate on where Demigra, Tor, and Mira come from and go to that world, go to the Demon Realm, take, take the cast there and make something from that. You know, I'd have to have a good think about that and where they could take it. But there's so much, like, a lot of potential there, you know? And now, um, I'm going to throw a wacky idea at you right now. Um, Have you ever played, and this is more for, like, a downloadable game more than an actual, you know, full-out release. This is more of a smaller game. Have you ever played any of the games, any of the um, quote-unquote ninja games from the the old era, like Sega and NES? Uh, For example, Shinobi, uh, Ninja Gaiden, any of those? Uh, Have you ever played played I've played the Shinobi games, but not Ninja Gaiden. And let me just tell you that Shinobi, fuck that game's hard. That's so is Ninja Gaiden. Say. They're all hard. What if yeah. they do a game just like that, except it's Trunks with his sword and he's cutting through people? That'd be awesome, bro. That'd be cool, but that to me, that'd be the sort of game where... Are you talking about like doing the same exact same kind of side screen thing, like uh, an arcade? Yeah, like, like a side... Yeah, that's why I said yeah. it would be a small kind of... Uh, like, yeah. release not a major game you know, like a downloadable see, game or an i an iphone game you yeah know what I'm saying? yeah and they can still make money off these things they just need to do do them the right way so they could release these in tandem with other things like the kind of extreme betoden console version they could do a game like that and then later down the line they could release that game as well and kind of make money off kind of smaller games um you know yeah well that's what i'm saying like that that's an idea doing like kind of smaller games you know like yeah uh, that could work. I mean, that's just one. I mean, you could also do. I mean, again, we're just brainstorming here. You know, you could do a, a game um, based on. This is gonna be wacky, bro. But you could take, and I'm taking old NES games and remaking them for Dragon Ball. You could take the old Kung Fu game from NES and replace it with Mr. Satan, and then have him fucking just fighting regular dudes. Remember, he is powerful. Uh, yeah. He is a tough guy compared to any other human being, just not compared yeah. to anybody who knows how to use key, including his own daughter. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they could do something yeah. like that. I'm just, I'm thinking of just at this point, I, I'm either gonna go with your idea, where you release a big, you know, uh, epic story with demons and shit, and then you also have smaller games like the one I'm talking about. I just. I'm kind of done with Dragon Ball Z fighting games, at least for a little while. Luckily, I've, I've, I've personally taken a break from them, but I just I don't want to do 
you know, Radix to Boo yeah. in a fighting system ever Absolutely. again, bro. I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm sorry. It's just every game now. And I like how yeah. Budokai Look. let you customize the characters and put in, like, you know, you give them, like, items and shit. That would, there's cool shit. Don't get me wrong. It's just that mm. uh, the thing that's great about Xenoverse is they took the old school idea and they actually, like, added to it, uh, it tremendously, I think. One of the one of the better games I played, and I can't stress this enough with the Dragon Ball Z games. They need to keep the RPG element. The fans don't want fighting games anymore. They want RPG games, and this is I think this is me fair saying that the fans want this because I'm a hardcore Dragon Ball Z game video game fan, and I want more Dragon Ball Z RPG games. And they don't even have to be like Xenoverse. They can be like what I said <laughs> they, before, they where be you like have... old school Final Fantasy. You think? Yeah, yeah, and they can, and and even though you did say you don't want to do the the classic. Um, Raditz to Boo, that's fine, but do it the way I did set it before with the twist where you get a different ending to the saga for each character and it's you're not doing the traditional fighting, you're doing, an, doing it in an RPG way. A perfect example of that is uh, what is it called? The uh, Nintendo DS game, Attack of the Saiyans I think it's called. Um, yes, the Dragon Ball Kai that, game. That's yeah, that's uh, I've got that game on, on the DS and that's a great game. Like That's one of the better games I've played. What about um, this, bro? First person shooter and you play as Jocko the Galactic Patrolman. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. As long as they... Um, That'd be wacky. Yeah, because well, they've already... He's kind of already twisted the... He's put put those two and like merged them together with Fukatsu and OF, so you could, you could like, in bring the Dragon Ball Z cast in for that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it's cameos. I'm talking about you play as Jocko and you go around shooting things. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I know what you meant, yeah, but that'd be cool just to have them in there, yeah, like you said, as cameos, you know, because he's already he's already merged those two universes together in the new movie, so. Well, he mer no, yep. he merged them in the in, in the comic, bro, because the, the, you find out that he's that, that they're in the same universe. I okay, I haven't read all. I haven't read all. It's not a spoiler to me because I'm gonna read it eventually, but I haven't gotten around to reading all of the Jocko, the Galactic Pop Trollman well, manga, you, but I will you do. You need to like now, bro. That shit was awesome. Did you see my video about it? I, I haven't watched it. I'm being honest with you. I'm not going to say yes, I've watched it. No, I haven't watched well, you should because it's awesome. I'm just saying. Yeah. Jocko, Jocko the Galactic Patrolman, the manga, is awesome, bro. So uh, I'm just putting it over here. But uh, Yeah, well, I, I said to myself I'm going to uh, read the manga before I see the movie because it just adds to the experience if I understand his backstory a bit better before I see the movie. Exactly. So, yeah. It's only 10 bucks. I mean, it's yeah. it really is cheap. Um, all right. Well, that's going to do it. I mean, we kind of uh, we kind of talked about it pretty well here. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, hopefully, I mean, the, the future is bright. As long as we get more movies, we're going to get more games. Um, I just want them to really get creative and kind of yeah. come up with. I really do want them to come up with unique storylines for these games, you know, different storylines yeah. and not just yeah. replay the show or the manga, you know. Yeah. Well, for me, in summarizing, closing it up, it's, it's basically they have to. Just keep going with what they're doing with Xenoverse, and that that is a step in the right direction. You know, we can't expect miracles from from the people who make the games, which I think is Bandai Namco, um, and Atari. But I don't know if they make Atari. Them yeah, yeah, but you can't you can't expect miracles from them because they're not known for making fantastic games. Their best games is probably like, to be honest with you, is the Dark Souls franchise. So. Um, they're not known for making amazing games. They've got Bloodborne that's just come out in the PS4 and then the Dark Souls franchise. And then Xenoverse is a really good, solid game. And then they've got the occasional good DBZ game here and there throughout the last uh, 15 years. So Xenoverse, to me, is a step in the right direction. They need to uh, improve on that. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, my thing is, though... I think they should ease up on coming out with so many games. I think they should put one out every two years. Yeah. Uh, or or do my idea where you put a big one out and then you put smaller ones out. You know, like if you're gonna In put, between. let's say they're gonna put out Xenoverse two, that shouldn't come out till next year. Um, but that doesn't mean they can't come out with a game this year, which they already are, you know, Extreme Butoden. Um, but that's kind of my idea is to do – because you, you don't want to do like it was in the 2000s where we had like five games a year, bro. It's just it's, – and then you had like sagas and fuck that game, bro. I'd like, I like to think the longer we wait, the better the game's going to be. And that's sometimes – it's not always the case, but sometimes it is. So hopefully they don't do it next year, hopefully maybe even the year after. But it's got to be good. When they release it, it's got to be in a step up because if it's not a step up – from Xenoverse, people are going to lose confidence in them pretty much straight away. And also, they got to hurry up and make Chill the playable character because oh, yeah. I want to play as Chilled real bad. Well, Xenoverse does have a couple of characters that haven't been playable in Dragon Ball Z games before, so they've, they've done they're, they've taken it in the right direction. Yes. 
All right, then. Well, thanks again for joining me. And uh, everybody, subscribe, comment, let us know what you want to see in the future of Dragon Ball Z video games. Catch you down the road.